Yeah, thank you, Andy. Uh, yeah, I've known Andy for quite a while. I know that he has been one of the leaders in the development and use of the Access Web Apps. Uh, and uh, I got involved with it right when they came out. Uh, I'll tell you a little bit about myself. I, I run a company called Grover Park Consulting. It's now mostly part-time. I retired about a year ago and I keep my hand in by doing small projects for long-term clients. Um, and the, what I found by doing it that way is that I can work for the people that I want to work for, and I don't have to work for the people that I don't. So being part-time has its positives. My original work was called Grover Park George on Access. It's now, boy, 12 years old. And out of date, I'm hoping that one of the benefits of being <clears throat> part-time is that I can come out with a new edition before the end of the year, but that's still to be seen. Worked with Ben Clothier and Tim Renzi on a book called Microsoft Access in a SharePoint World, which was based on the 2010 uh, implementation of Access Web Databases. I contributed to a couple of other Access books over the years, and most recently, as Andy mentioned, I was uh, co-author with Ben uh, Clothier on the Access Web App portion of Professional Access 2013. Uh, I, I think Ben was definitely the lead. Uh, I helped him out. Uh, and in, in the interest of accuracy, I think that's the best way to describe it. On my website, I do have some free demos and samples that you can go and look at. And I'm still pretty active at Utter Access where I'm the guy who you talk to if you screw up. Okay. Andy already covered this, so I won't really go through these slides. Basically, if you want to try Access Web Apps, you need an account. Uh, one thing I will say is that I recommend you create a separate subsite for each Access Web App uh, for a couple of reasons. One, it sort of isolates uh, the app from other apps and makes it easier to track. But also, if you intend to share the application with other people, having a subsite is definitely the way to go because you can create unique permissions and restrict it to people uh, that you want to have permissions just to that web app. Okay, I'm going to show you some materials from one of my personal projects. Uh, this is just my way of saying, uh, please respect my privacy. Um, and you'll see why that's important in just a second. All right, George, so I'm going to interrupt you for a second. So do you want me to pause recording of this for now? No, no, no I, I, I was just going to say, uh, no, it, it's fine. Oh, the recording? Uh, yeah, go ahead and record it. Uh, okay, if, there, if there's parts you want me to leave off, um, let me know where we can edit it afterwards as well. Yeah, I don't think there's anything that I'm going to show that's that big a deal. Okay. okay. I'm going to give you access to the data itself, but I don't think you're going to see anything that's, that's that big a deal. Uh, so the context of this particular app is a diabetes test and measure log. Uh, one of the reasons I retired is I was diagnosed with diabetes. And one of my therapies was creating an access web app to track all this stuff. And so that's the genesis of this thing and how it came into being. And it's kind of become a bit of an obsession and a bit of a motivational tool. Uh, one of the things that I wanted to implement here is a way to highlight key performance indicators. Um, this is very, very common in dashboards and in your businesses, of course, your, your KPI dashboards are going to be a lot more complex, a lot more uh, advanced than what I'm showing here. But this is just a simple way to show green, red, yellow strategies for different uh, KPIs or performance indicators. Um, I'm going to call out the fact that I originally set this up with blue, meaning the current result. But one thing I discovered 
over the last three days as I was going through this and getting ready for the presentation is that's probably not the best choice. I probably should make the current results red, green, yellow as well. But in the interest of uh, not humiliating myself, I decided not to change anything the day before the presentation. <clears throat> I'd rather have it work than have it look good. So you'll see several things as I go that can be improved, uh, but I'm not going to try to do that until after I'm done with the presentation. So red, yellow, green, uh, and four different KPIs. The current result, which reflects uh, the result that we see in the left list here, you can see pulse from 314, blood pressure from 314, blood glucose from 314. So whatever is showing in this current result is whatever is currently selected here in the list on the left. Last result is the most recently entered or last result for that metric. Uh, that will change, update as I add new metrics, but it basically says that's the last one that I entered. And, and in this case, since we're looking at the most recently entered, the current and the last are the same. Minimum is the best ever, or the, I guess, best ever uh, being relative to the metric, but uh, the, the least or the lowest result ever entered in my database for that particular metric in the history of the database, and then of course the max. A uh, couple of things about that, of course, minimum and maximum are probably going to always be green and red going forward, because if I ever do get a minimum result that's lower than the one that's shown here, 84 over 65, it's going to be lower or further into the green, so it's not actually going to change the color. And the same is true for maximum. If, if I ever get a higher max result, and God forbid that should happen, then uh, it will also be red for the same reason. Okay. Um, any questions before I move on? Because uh, I think I've got plenty of time. Okay, so one of the questions here. Um, when you talk about your, um, uh, what is he referring to is his measurements of his health? So, uh, okay, let me, yeah, again, basically with my condition, certain things like blood pressure and blood glucose are really important to keep track of. Uh, so blood pressure being at 103 over 67 is good or someone with my condition at my age. So by having it show up as green every time I log in, that's the positive, positive motivation I need to say I'm doing well, I'm taking my medications, I'm exercising, doing all the things I need to do to keep my blood pressure under control. Does that address it? And, and for each of these other measurements, uh, blood glucose and weight, there are other uh, metrics, or actually targets, I should say, that I want to shoot for. And I want to see uh, greens in, in those metrics when I look at it. Okay. okay. So how would we do that in a traditional access ACCDB? Well, you'd go to the conditional formatting dialog and set up some rules. Okay, George, I'm going to interrupt you just a second. I saw another uh, question come in. Um, it's George, do you do data entry through mobile devices or just through uh, your main desktop or laptop? Oh, excellent question. Uh, yes, I do enter data through my smartphone. Um, now, uh, that isn't the most comfortable or the most simple thing to do, but I can do it. Uh, the reason for that is uh, access web apps are not responsive. You know, they, they shift from horizontal to the vertical display as you rotate the device, but they don't really expand and contract uh, 
the way a truly responsive app would. So sometimes it is a little bit difficult to hit the right key, uh, but I, had, I can do it. And that actually, now that you mention it, uh, is one of the reasons why I wanted to do this, because I take my smartphone with me when I go to visit my uh, primary care physician, and I can put my smartphone on my desk in front of him and show him my results. Uh, and that's also part of the, the, the program there, is that he can, he can see how I'm doing and how I've been doing recently. Okay? I wouldn't recommend it as the first choice, but it definitely can be done. And I think a Surface uh, device with a larger screen size would be comfortable. Okay. So conditional formatting in the access environment, you just figure out which field you want to set the rules for, in this case, test result. Uh, you set the expressions. If systolic pressure is less than or equal to 19, make it green. If it's greater than or equal to 120 and less than or equal to 140, make it yellow. And if it's greater than 141, make it red. And you can see the results of that in the right side of the screen there. And as you can see, that 164 over, eight, over 85 happened in May. On May 9th last year, immediately after exercise, uh, I managed to push my blood pressure way up there by exercising. And so don't ever want to do that again. But that's basically how you would do it in an ACCDB. How would you do this in an AWA? We do not have the conditional formatting mechanism in an AWA. There's no way to do that. However, you can programmatically set back color and fore color on text boxes. Now I put in parentheses here, lit but not labels. I have not yet found a way, <clears throat> excuse me. I have not yet found a way to programmatically change those properties on labels. You can set them at runtime, at, excuse me, at design time, uh, but I haven't figured out how to do that in runtime. But you definitely can set back color and for color on text boxes programmatically at runtime, and that's what I ended up doing. Okay, so this requires several tools to make it work. Uh, the first one I have is a table of targets, and the targets are those metrics and the values I want to show. That allows me to persist those targets between sessions. This is one of the advantages, of course, of, of, of access, is you can make a lot of things data-driven, and, and a lot of functionality can be driven off of persistent values and tables. The second piece that makes it work is an on-start macro that initializes a set of temp bars from the target values in the table. Uh, the on-start macro allows us to set up temp bars as you probably know, temp bars, once they get a value, per, re, retain that same value throughout that session unless you programmatically change it again. But by initializing them at startup, then I know that uh, my targets are going to be set as temp bars and I can refer to them later. <laughs> okay, the temp bars save those targets for the current session only. Uh, once you end the session, they go away, but they're persisted in the table. And then I use a series of data macros, actually two data macros. They return the current result that I'm looking at, the last result or the most recently entered result, the maximum result ever recorded, and the minimum result ever recorded. And those then are stored <coughs> into temp bars that I can use as targets in, in formatting. And the last piece is the UI macro that runs on the form or the view uh, to apply the conditional formatting rules to controls for the current metric. So those five things working together allow me to do conditional formatting for KPIs. Okay, 
So let's take a look at it and see what it looks like. And I'm going to start it here, and it may come up on my other monitor. If it does, then I will shift. Oh, yes, it did. Okay, so I'm going to shift it over here. Okay, you can see on the right hand here oh, that originally these were all white backgrounds. And then at some moment, the values popped in and the colors updated. Do you all see that? Let me see if I could re yeah, yeah well, I'll just refresh it and you can see originally we have the current result, but then the other three are white. The reason that's happening is the on start macro is running, and that on start macro is initializing all of these variables that I need to do this. Uh, that happens whenever you first start the app. It also happens anytime you reload the app. So if I push F5 or use the reload button in the browser, it refreshes that. Okay. So now you can see uh, how that looks. Once those are loaded, going between the different, uh, oh, I'll show you my weight. This is one of those. All right. As you can see, I'm struggling here. But I'm making progress. But as I update these, these change to reflect uh, the current metric, in this case, pulse. Last result, minimum result, and maximum. That maximum was probably one of those exercise sessions last year when I didn't come back feeling real good. But that's not a problem. Okay, how does this work? Oh, I want to I want to mention one more thing before I go on. Uh, let's see. One of the important factors is this 60-day average. Um, again, this is specific to the diabetes, but the doctor is more interested in the average over the past 60 days than he is on any specific one. So I started putting this in here so I can keep track of that. You can see this result is real close to the average, and that makes me feel good. Okay. Back to the presentation. Okay, so what happened? The on start macro runs when the app loads or reloads. It initializes the temp bars, and there are temp bars for both colors and targets. And that allows me to change the target level and the colors in those. Uh, KPIs. So if I want to change from uh, red, yellow, green to another set of colors, purple, orange, and brown, I can do that. And immediately the view will update with those new colors. And again, the important thing here is those targets are persisted in a table that I use to initialize each of those targets at startup. So the data macro retrieves the last results for each metric. For each metric, it retrieves the minimum results ever entered. It also retrieves the maximum results ever entered and sets the temp bars. Then the form itself for the view loads, and the UI macro runs on the current event of the view, and it uses the current value to set a variable for the test type, what type of test am I looking at, and what is the result that goes with that particular test on that particular date and time. And then finally, it runs through a set of rules in the macro to apply the correct uh, colors. So let's go back. I didn't want to go there yet. I wanted to. And, and just real quick, um, I wanted to comment that I, I, I was playing around with changing the color of the label, um, uh -huh. and you can change the, um, the 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 four color of a label 
um, using that the property uh, change property method. Um, so, so you can do that in the future. Yeah, I will look into that. I had not been able to do that, or at least when I set this up, I hadn't. You know, yeah. so it, well, that's the other thing. I kind of commented on that earlier, and I'll comment on it again as I go through this. Uh, as I was going through this, uh, getting ready for today, I realized there's a lot of things that I would change now, do differently, uh, and that might be one of the things that I would, you know, re revisit is, is using. Uh, Colors on the labels as well uh, to do that, but uh, and, and you'll see some of these things later. So I'm going to bring up this is the actual design interface. Uh, Andy showed you this when he set his up. So we have the tables. Here's views and the data macros. So. Uh, Go up here under the advanced and the on start macro. Okay, this is the macro that starts when I run, when I load the application for the first time. It runs this data macro called set variables. Uh, it brings in the value of each variable from a uh, persisted table. Uh, I'll show you that uh, set macro, excuse me, set variable macro in a second. This one here um, is a step that I added to deal with another problem, and I'll come back to that uh, in the next slide. Uh, I added that step to deal with a problem I was having in getting it to work the way I wanted. But as you can see, it goes through and sets all of these different um, variables based on what I'm looking at. So good blood sugar, bad blood sugar, uh, A1C, systolic, bad systolic, good systolic, weight good, weight bad, uh, pulse good, pulse bad. And I'm also looking now, I, start, I recently added uh, diet related stuff. So I'm now looking at daily carb intake and the daily uh, caloric intake. And as I showed you back there, this is this is an area of emphasis going forward. <laughs> we also set the variables for the various colors. And right now I'm using white, black, red, green, yellow. But again, as I said, I can change that so that uh, keep the same variable name, but change the shade. And I could probably use that as Andy just pointed out to change the uh, labels as well. But I haven't thought about doing that yet. Okay, so back to the slide presentation. The first part is, again, using this set variables macro to go and get the value for the target. This set variable I added because what I found is that some of my targets or variables are actually strings. These in the green rectangle at the bottom are actually the uh, hex codes for the different colors. And so they're formatted as pound sign FF0000 for red. Uh, I did not want to have a table with two fields, one for numeric values, one for text values. Uh, that felt inappropriate to me. So I put everything into a single value field, made it text, and store the numbers and the text in the same field. Well, the problem that generated was I discovered math on those values didn't always work the way I expected it to. Like most of the time it was fine, but every once in a while I would get a weird result. So what I did was I said, I will use this simple math equation. Multiply the temp, the temp bar, by one, and that forced access or the AWA to recognize that that is a number. And that's all this set variable does. It just multiplies it by one, and that ensures that it's interpreted as a number later. 
And since we don't want to do that with the color uh, variables down here in the green section, you see they don't include that step. Comments or questions? Okay, one other side note. I tend to get uh, sidetracked really easily. So if we run out of time or start running short of time, don't hesitate to ring me in, okay? And since I'm not getting a lot of visual feedback from an audience, I'm, I'm not sure if I'm on track or not. So yeah, we're we're doing good. Um, yeah. It's 7:50, and we, so we've got 40 minutes. Oh, okay. So we're doing time. really, really good. Yeah. Okay. So this is what a data macro looks like, and I took a screenshot of it so I could annotate it, and then we'll go back and look at the same data macro inside the the uh, Access Design interview interface called set variables and it has five main sections. Uh, the first section is the parameter and I'm passing to it the variable to define. That would be something like uh, blood pressure good, blood pressure bad, uh, blood sugar good, blood pressure bad. With that variable, then we look in the variables table, that's the second step. And we get the value that corresponds to that metric. I could probably rename this to target instead of variables, and it would be more comfortable. As I said, one of the things that I realized yesterday, the day before, is that if I were starting now, I'd probably do some things a little differently, and that's one I would probably call that uh, table targets rather than table variables. But I'm a database guy, I think, in terms of variables. So we look in that table or the record where the variable name is the one we passed in. And this step four and five were uh, an attempt to address the problem I was referring to where I wanted these to be handled differently. I wanted the text variables to be handled differently from the numeric variables. And so I originally had it set up. So if the value had the uh, pound sign in it, meaning it was one of those hex codes, I just bring it in straight. Say, okay, set this variable value, the return bar. And the return bar, as you may know, is the value that's going to be passed back into the main macro from the data macro. We set that to just the value. And this was an original attempt to deal with the fact that I wanted that to be definitely an integer. So I used the cast function to cast it as an integer. I'm not sure if that is effective anymore. I think I may come back and just pull this all out and just send it back. Because I showed you the set variable simple math function that should accomplish the same thing more simply. All right, so the result of this data macro is we get um, the value associated with that target. Okay, so here's what that table of targets looks like. Uh, we have two, blood sugar bad, blood sugar good. And the values associated with them are 150 and 119. And the way this works is if the target, if the current result is greater than, oops, didn't mean to click there. If the target is less than the current result, we're on the good side, and we're not going to use red. I said that backwards. Let me say it again. If the current result is over 150, we're on the bad side, and we're going to use the red color. If the result for the current test is under 100, or is 119 or less, we're in the good side, so we're going to use green. 
if the current result is between 119 and 150, we're going to use the yellow. And for caloric intake, these are the current targets. I think I'm going to be adjusting these as I fine tune diet. Uh, I think they're both too high. Uh, but we'll see how that goes after a couple of months. If I'm still uh, wanting to set 1600 as a daily target for, for calories. But that's how that part works. Okay. So, oh, here, here's the full list. This is just another view of the targets laid out in the three sections. So you've got. This is the original basic set of metrics and their values. The color metric or the color uh, values that I want to use. And now the new ones are the dietary related. Ones. Okay. So that's how we get the values. We set the UI macro. And it's going to apply the conditional formatting uh, each time the current event runs on this view. Now, do we need to stop and talk about that or, you know, comfortable with what that means? I, I, just so you know, I, I saw a comment come in from Jeff, and um, he mentioned that there is a kind of a cool uh, pro tip in that the um, – under set property in a macro, you can now set the four color and back color using an actual color name, like quote red quote. Um, I've never tested that, so that oh, that's pretty I, cool. I hadn't seen I that. I wasn't aware of that. I'll, I'll I'll try that out. So yeah, me too. How do you get those names? I mean. We'll, we'll we'll see if he. Yeah, we we can talk about that later. But yeah, yeah I, if, if I can substitute, you get it through trial and error. Use, yeah, I mean, it's, it's like in VBA. Uh, there are color constants. You know, the VB red, the VB yellow. Uh, right. So it'd be really nice to be able to do something similar here. Yeah, and Jeff I'm is saying to... that it's um, through trial and error. So we may um, that may be a, a a fun project that we do and create a list. Oh, okay, great. Yeah, that'd so, be that'd be very handy. That's yeah. Fun. When I did this, I don't know if that was available then, and I just didn't know about it, or if it's more recent. But uh, this was my attempt to work around it. Okay. So the macro, excuse me, the UI macro runs on the current event of the view, and this is what it looks like. The first thing it does, step one, is it sets the variable called test type ID to the value of the combo test control on the form. So that way I know whatever the current test I'm looking at, uh, this variable called test type ID has that value. So it's going to be one, two, three, four, five, whatever test. Then it's going to run a data macro to get my result set. Uh, this is another one of those, oops, if I were doing this again, I'd probably be a little smarter. I originally called it min test result because my plan was to have min, max, and last have different macros. And I realized partway through, well, gee, I can get all the data that I need out of one macro, but I didn't rename it. So it's still called min. This step three was another interim attempt to try to make sure I was getting uh, numbers or text. Uh, values to do the later formatting. And I think now that I've uh, kind of figured out a simpler way to do it, I will pull this out. But I'm going to do that after the presentation, uh, just in case. So steps, excuse me, step four is I'm going to initialize the control values and colors. And this basically sets everything to a uh, Default color scheme, white, uh, black font on white background, uh, initializes the control values uh, based on whatever I retrieved uh, up here in the test result macro. And then that way I've got a, a kind of a default blank uh, canvas to do the later formatting, and I don't have to worry about a color bleeding over from a previous. <clears throat> 
test and, and, and not being the right color. Everything goes back to a default status. And then we run through uh, a series of formatting rules to, to change the back and fore colors depending on what we're looking at. Uh, a little bit of comment about this too. So five, six, and seven all work together for the blood sugar test, which is test one. Minimum, max, and last. When I was first setting this up in January of last year, February of last year, I broke these out into individual steps because I was kind of working out the logic and how I wanted it to work, and it was much easier to keep track of as separate individual steps. Looking back at it again, I think it would make more sense uh, to try to merge some of these uh, into a hierarchical if structure uh, and not have so many different individual steps. And that's another thing I'll probably do in the next couple, three weeks or months is, is look at ways to simplify this structure, actually make it more complicated because each of these is a separate step. So by implementing a series of conditional uh, statements in a hierarchy, I should be able to merge some of these individual discrete steps into one. But that's another. That's what, that's what I love best about Access. You can always improve the last thing you worked on, and, and this is no, no different. Okay, so basically five, six, and seven are where the conditional formatting happens. Okay, uh, let's take a, a look at, quick look at this other data macro, the one that gets the test results, and then go, go back into the actual macro. We pass to it the test type, and again, this will be one, two, three, four, five, depending on which test I'm looking at. Last means the most recently recorded. So I have a query called last test result, which just has the test type ID, and the last recorded value. It's a max or an aggregate query using max. Anybody have questions about that or is that kind of basic? The, the only question I, um, that it popped up um, and a couple of people had to bug out, but the one question is, is um, do you duplicate this macro on different views or is it, um, or is this only on this one view? Yes and no. Okay, uh, the yes part is if I were to create a different view that used the same content, I would probably duplicate parts of it. Uh, however, the, the data macros uh, are going to run the same wherever they're called from. See, in other words, this is into the, if we're looking at the parameter, the test type ID, you can pass the test type ID from any view and have the same results run. So I can put this macro on the current view on a different view uh, and just use this same data macro. Now the UI might be different. The UI macro would therefore have to be different. Um, and I think I mentioned, let's see if I can go back a slide or two, uh, right here. You can see that I'm looking at a specific control to get the test type. So this step would have to be different. It refers to the specific source of that uh, test type on that view. But then the rest of it would be similar. Okay. I'm going to plunge ahead. This is where my uh, BP measure got a little messy, and this is kind of an original workaround. Um, because BP is reported as systolic slash diastolic, or they say systolic over diastolic, it doesn't look like the other metrics. They're all numbers, 119.72. In order to make sure that I got this one the way I wanted it, I segregated that test out, and I'm only using systolic 
to check the max. And the logic that I would have to go through to say, well, if it's 164 over 85, is that higher or lower or better or worse than 162 over 90? You know, one's higher, one's lower, which is which? So rather than get into that whole thing, I came to the conclusion that all I'm really worried about is the systolic value, which is the first of the two values. And I'll use that uh, as the max and not worry about the second part. So I'm pulling that separately. This is the average. Uh, this query is uh, another uh, aggregate query that just calculates the average of all blood sugar tests over the last 60 days. And so if I have, if I pass into it the test type one, then I want to use the average. And I get that. Okay, any questions about this? So it's going to pass back a couple of return bars. And I think what I want to do now is right here, that's where we're calling the data macro number two. Number three, we're not going to use. And I think what I'm going to do is hop back into the macro itself. Uh, and expand it a little bit so we can look at it. Okay, so, and we just saw this in the screen, so I won't go through it too much detail, but we set the variable looking at the combo box on the form, the view, run the data macro. The data macro requires that one parameter, which is the test type, and it passes back four results. It passes back the minimum test result for that type of test. It passes back the max result, the last recorded result, and it passes back the average of blood sugar, which I use in one specific case. Okay. Questions there? Yeah. This one I think I'm going to pull out. Uh, and see if I can keep things working correctly without it. But I didn't do that yet. Okay, so basically we come in and say, all right, we're going to initialize <clears throat> these text boxes to the value that we just returned. And if we're not looking at this particular, well, we're always going to make this control invisible, both the label and the text box invisible, and I'll turn them back on if I need them. That's the theory that everything should be a baseline default first. Now, this is the part here, which actually does the conditional formatting. And as I mentioned before, I think these are actually broken out still into individual steps. I, I'm pretty sure um, that I can come back now with the logic worked out and combine these into a series of if statements that will collapse them down. All right, so the logic here we, for the minimum test value for blood sugar test one is if the test type is one and the minimum test result is greater than zero and the minimum test result is equal to my good target or if the minimum test result is less than a good target, then I'm going to change the back color on that particular control to green. At one point, I was having trouble getting it to recognize greater than or equal to or less than or equal to. And so I split it out into those two equal to or less than as two separate statements. Uh, I think that's a matter of impatience uh, as much as anything. I think that should work. But that was one of those uh, early steps where I said, I just want this to work, and I'll come back and fix it later. And then, of course, later never came. So I think I can fix that. 
if the test type is one and the result is greater than the good, so the, the good target is 119. So if this minimum test result is greater than that, and it's equal or less than the bad target. So that means it's between 119 and 160 or whatever that is. And we're going to make that yellow because we're in the, the warning zone. And the last step is if it's greater than my bad, then I'm just going to turn it uh, red in the back color. And I've experimented back and forth with visibility here. And I left this in here partly because I wanted to talk about that a little bit. But when I was designing this, I could never come to, I could never make up my mind about whether I wanted to see white text on black, or excuse me, on red, or black text on red. And uh, the visibility of it seems to depend uh, on my mood as much as anything else. But uh, this one sets the, the text to white and the back to red. And that seems to be uh, most visible at that point. OK, so then the rest of these then are the steps that do the other controls, max, uh, last. And it checks for the A1C. It checks for uh, blood pressure and so on. So that's basically how it works. Um, the result, as you saw, is that on the right here, these four controls plus the average control light up with different values and different uh, colors depending on the test type and the result. And so that's how I was able to accomplish the goal of uh, conditional formatting for KPIs in a web app, access web app. Any questions before we go on? Comments? Suggestions? I don't see any questions in the chat window. OK. okay. Uh, one more thing, then. How much time do we have? Uh, we've got about 15 minutes. Oh, OK, great. I'll hop over then and look at the meal planner, because that's the most recent part I used, did. And it uses the same approach for a different purpose. Uh, the last time I talked to my diabetes nurse, she explained to me that if I eat too many calories and don't exercise enough, I'm going to get fat. Uh, it's so obvious that uh, I said, I don't need to know that. But she then talked me into uh, building a calorie counter. And so this is the result of that. There are commercial, commercially available calorie counters. And I think there are probably commercially available uh, you know, apps that track other things. But this one was a natural extension. So I put in this part. Now, what I'm doing here is I'm taking uh, different food items and using a website that has that information, look up uh, uh, the number of oh, yeah. carbs, the number of calories per serving. So I can kind of track then uh, if, if lunch, that's not lunch, that was today's thing. Lunch, okay, sorry, that's today's lunch. A tilapia fillet, however many, uh, is an ounce. And I had a one ounce tilapia fillet, which gave me 27 carbs. Excuse me, 27 calories, zero carbs, half a gram of fat, all good. One of the things that was a real disappointment to me, oatmeal, which is one of my favorite breakfasts, look at the calories in a half cup, or in a full cup of oatmeal. Not only high in carbohydrates, but it's you know, relatively high in calories. So even though I like oatmeal, I don't eat it every day because I don't want to blow up my, my calorie count. But my goal here now is, is to keep within 
the target of 1,600 and 160 for carbs. The way this works is these two fields here update to reflect whether I'm under target in between the low and the high or above the high. And it works exactly the same way I just showed you, except that it's uh, going to uh, use words. And you can see it, it's updating here. Uh, see if I can find one. Scroll back here. Okay. So I'm hey, George. Saying, right, I hit 1,900 calories that day, which is still okay. It's not great, but it's above my goal. And you can see it's updating, doing the same kind of math that I'm doing in the other uh, macro that I showed you, except it's just specifically looking at. Uh, Jeff um, asked that we point out that um, uh, the technique you showed won't work for the data sheet views in Access mm. Web Apps. Yes, that's why I didn't try to do labels. Thank you, Jeff. I had forgotten that. That's why I went with text boxes rather than labels, because I couldn't get it to work in the data sheet. Wow, I had forgotten that entirely, yeah. yeah it won't work in the data sheet, which is why, as a matter of fact, I, I'm using this rather than colors here. Good, two good points, yeah. Uh, I was able to update the content of the text box, but I couldn't change the back color or for color. And the same for labels, and that's why I didn't I gave up trying to use labels early on because I wanted to be able to do it in, in data sheet view as well, and, and it didn't work in data sheet view. Wow, okay. Thank you. I knew there was a reason, I just forgot it. So you can see these, this was a very bad day, uh, whatever day that was. Uh, carbs went way over, calories went way over, uh, and, and I can go back and look at where the culprits are. Uh, oatmeal and a, and a onion bagel kind of blew up that day. So again, I, I can show you that macro, but it works exactly the same as the one I just showed you, except <clears throat> it's just using good, okay, or bad as the content of the text value, since I don't have the option of putting the colors on there. And because of this, the space limitations here, I didn't really have room to do this as uh, list views or other views. I, I wanted to use the data sheet to save space. So that's kind of it. Um, at this point, uh, I'm gonna go through if there are any other questions or comments, we can do that, but otherwise I'm thinking that's kind of... Yeah, so I'll unmute, uh, I'll unmute everyone. So if anybody has any questions um, they want to throw out to um, George, please do that. I'm getting feedback, but no questions. <laughs> no questions, yeah. That's why I'm hearing the same thing. I will just, uh, while we're waiting for somebody to formulate their questions or comments, uh, I think it would be a good idea. I'm going to try to package this up as a distributable app. I'm not going to put it on the App Store. Uh, maybe later I'll get around to finalizing it to the point where it'll be, you know, in enough of a final state to put it on the App Store. But if anybody wants a copy of it, uh, just go through Andy and let him know. And uh, uh, what I'll do is I'll make a, an app package of it, remove all the personal data, uh, and just leave the uh, target uh, data and some other stuff. Yeah, I really like what you've done. It's, it's improved every time I see it. It's really you know, cool. interesting. Yeah, thank you. Uh, like I say, it, it's sort of been therapy in a certain way. Uh, and it does provide the motivation because when I can look at that and see green uh, 
instead of red, then that makes me happy. Sure. Good. Well, we see. Uh, I see. There's a Rona on, and Judy and Charles. Does anybody um, have any questions for George? We have got about ten minutes for questions. If if anybody has anything. Oh, this, all right. Well, if, if you don't have any questions, I'll I'll, I'll hop into this one. Hey George, I have a quick question. Sure. About how many records do you have in the various tables? Uh, the the larger table I think has just over, oh, I want to say two thousand or three thousand. Uh, the second biggest one has just over fifteen hundred. Great, thanks. Yeah. Um, I I also track exercise, and you can see that one here. What I discovered two days ago, or like three days, well actually, yeah. Three days ago is that the building I live in actually has an exercise room in it, and they have exercise equipment, including a bike. So instead of going out in the Seattle rain to run, I can go downstairs to the first floor and sit on the bike, and I get just as good a workout that way. So I'm also tracking uh, exercise. And that, since we do have a couple more minutes. I also wanted to talk about this really quickly uh, uh, at the risk of overload. Uh, are there any other questions about what we talked about so far? Uh, one of the questions that popped up is, um, is there a way for you to show the calories? Well, not total. It's, it's by day. So this Daily, this daily amount, that's the total for today so far. Yeah, but that doesn't include the, the workouts, correct? No, and, you know, I can say, that's why I say it's, I don't really consider it a final version because I can probably, because now I do have access to this equipment, yeah, they do provide feedback on, you know, calories burned. I don't know how accurate that is, whether it's just an estimate or there's some way of measuring it. But now that I have that, yeah, I can start putting that in here also. Okay. And then the other question is, is um, the the daily nutrients by food items, mm -hmm. is that something that you typed in or did you, because um, like here you've got like coffee and coffee creamer. Are you Did you pull that from a database or how are you grabbing those? Are, are you actually looking at the packages or... What are you yeah, doing? What, okay, what I do is, and, and this has grown over the last, you know, however long I've been doing it, several days now. Yeah, I when I get a package out of the cupboard or out of the refrigerator, I look at the package and say, okay, what does it tell me? Because they're really good these days about putting serving sizes and calories and carbs and fats and proteins. So here's another one of my. Uh, tragic discoveries. Bacon, an ounce of bacon has 153 calories and 11.8 fat grams in it. And that's straight off the back of the package. Um, barbecue sauce isn't too bad. Let's see. Uh, and actually, these are each items that I have incorporated into my diet. And as I you know, bring something new in, I put it into the to the system. I know this is a little off topic from the database discussion, mm -hmm. but as you're looking at the different food items, are there are there things that you that you found that were either surprisingly good for you that you're now starting to eat a lot more of, or surprisingly bad that you had no idea it was so bad? Well, for yeah, you? What, I think I already mentioned oatmeal. That one was rather a disappointment because a half cup of oatmeal has 150 calories and uh, 27 carbs. So a cup of oatmeal in the morning for breakfast is 300 car calories before, you know, I get off the stool. And if the target is 1,600, that's a fifth of my daily calories right there in one cup of oatmeal. So, yeah, there have been a few things like that that have been uh, 
pluses and minuses. But the interesting thing is like like everything else, by, by having that in my face, it's very motivational. You know, you know what I mean? Like uh, an ounce of chicken is 16, an ounce of bacon is 153. So if it's a choice between bacon and eggs for breakfast, or you know, whatever else, uh, I can't think of a good. It, it kind of it, it has had the desired effect that the diabetes nurse suggested, which is awareness is half the battle. Right. And, and I really wish I could make these colored, but you know, this is close enough. I can, yeah. I can say, okay, I'm still good for the day. So another another question that popped up is that. Um, is there any in, in the design of the database? Is there anything that you found that you couldn't do in the Access Web App um, that was like a critical functionality when you were designing it? Uh, critical, no. The hardest part was the conditional formatting for the KPIs. That was by far the most difficult. Uh, and I could, like I say, I can probably do some uh, work on that to make it less. Uh, brute force, but uh, I don't know that you could actually do the same thing otherwise, just because you know we're kind of spoiled in desktop access. You know, some things are just out of the box standard. Yeah, here's here's a way to do it. And uh, one of the things I've discovered is you can almost always accomplish a goal, but sometimes you've got to go down a different block and around a different corner to get there. So rather than say, well, I'm going to go do X, Y, Z, conditional formatting, you say, okay, I need to figure out how to do that and and figure out what tools are available. But uh, keeping in mind that there's nothing really complex, I'm not doing financial calculations. I I mentioned the fact that uh, Where did it go? I'm not seeing. Oh, yeah. I mentioned the fact that blood pressure is is measured as systolic over diastolic. Um, And so the math that it would take to look at a set, a pair, and figure out whether one was higher or lower than the other, yeah. I could probably do that, but the algorithm that I would have to come up with would be more complex than I wanted to to tackle. So yeah, there are limitations, uh, but I think you know the surrogate that I do have is pretty darn good and works just as well for my purposes. Oh, now how much time do we have left? We have about 30 seconds. Okay, so, <laughs> all right, I will tease this then. Uh, apps for Office. That's what this is. So if you want to learn about Apps for Office, you can schedule another session. I'll show you that. Yeah, and we um, last time we, we played around with Apps for Office with integrating a Power BI. Mm-hmm. Um, and just one of those interesting things is that I um, I had attempted to do it using 2016, uh-huh. and the, the Power BI tiles, uh, which was an Office web app, was actually created by a third-party vendor, and it is it does not appear to be compatible with 2016, but it does look like it's compatible with 2013. Yeah, um, that, yeah, I, I, that doesn't surprise me a bit. Yeah, now, so, these that I'm using are in fact third-party. Uh, apps for Office that I, that I incorporated, but you can right. see the goal here is you know, basically a chart, a line chart. And, and, yeah. But yeah, if you've already gone through that with with the Power BI, you don't need to go through it again. But that's kind of. All right, I cool. tell my doctor. I show my doctor this chart, and I say, as long as 
this wavy blue line stays between the top line and the bottom line, I'm a happy camper. Yeah, that's very cool. If Good job was, with that. Yeah, yeah, and that's that's the whole motivation. Okay. All right, cool. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording.